So we can just separate the H3O plus into H and H2O whenever we need to? That's right. Of course, we're not really separating it. We're just showing the, one of the bonds. This is something we do all the time with all types of compounds. So H3O plus really looks like this. Right? This is an oxygen with three bonds to hydrogen. Well, if you just want to write it in the most condensed format, you would write it like this. But if you want to show the H3O plus donating a proton, you should show one of the bonds to one of the protons, just so that you can put in the electron pushing arrows. But, this but there's time no is point. Taking, right? I'm sorry? This time is taking, right? Ah, so actually, I should have said here we have a water that's taking a hydrogen. Okay. So we didn't use H3O plus to take the hydrogen, we used water. Okay. You would use H3O plus to donate a proton. Mm -hmm. H3O plus wants to get rid of a proton, and water is willing to gain a proton. Notice what we did here is the water took a proton, and then I showed one of the products from that step was this H3O plus. This is called hydronium, by the way. H3O plus is hydronium. Let's take a stock of where we are right now. Well, what's the name of this type of functional group arrangement? What type of functional group did we start with here? That whole thing together would be in ethoxy? I don't know why. Let's use those terms acetal, hemiacetal, oh, okay. ketal, or hemiketal. Right. Uh, would I have been right though with the ethoxy or is that what's still wrong? Well, this is, this is a type of ether. Oh. So it's a double ether, but it's more useful to name this used in terms of those other terms. Okay, so it would be a ketal. That's right. A full ketal or a hemiketal? A full ketal. And now, how about this? Oh, What's this? So we know we're making progress because we've unraveled the full ketal into a hemiketal. How did we do that? By kicking off one of the alcohols and replacing it with the carbonyl oxygen. And now our job is to kick off the remaining alcohol and form a pi bond here. And then that'll finally get us back to the ketone. Okay. So remember, our last job now is to kick off this alcohol. But is this a good leaving group? No. How can we make it a better leaving group? Carbonated. Right. And we can confirm that in our handout over here. Now that the carbonyl oxygen has deprotonated, notice here that we got a hemiacetal or a hemiketal. So the handout reminds us what we're going to have at each point here. We started with a full acetal or a full ketal, and now we have a hemiacetal or a hemiketal. All right, now the second NU is going to protonate. Well, who do we mean by that nucleophilic atom? Uh, it's, I'm sorry, it would be the, oh goodness, the second nucleophile. Is that right there, CH3, CH2O? This al oxygen, right. this alcohol oxygen. Okay, so let's show that, the mechanism for that oxygen protonating. If you want to, you can just draw that mechanism right on this picture here. You don't need to redraw each intermediate twice. You can just show the mechanism happening here. Or you can redraw it if you need more space. Now, taking a look at, so now you're at this step. The nucleophile should leave, and we need to form the pi bond. Mm -hmm. Now, theoretically, you could do these either at the same time or separately, but maybe it's better to show these happening at the same time. The nucleophile leaving pushed off by the pi bond forming. 
So maybe a better way to draw what you drew is like this. We can show this lone pair coming down and kicking off this leaving group. Oh. The way you drew it actually is legitimate, but maybe this is a, be a slightly better way. Okay. We should actually show this lone pair coming in and kicking off this leaving group. Actually, some people might prefer either way, but maybe we'll stick with this way. Because remember, our goal all along was to make this into a carbonyl. Mm -hmm. So we want to get as quickly as possible to that double bond. Now, do you see that if the oxygen is donating its lone pair, it should end up with a positive charge? Since this oxygen is donating this lone pair, it's at the tail of an arrow, and it should end up with a positive charge here. Good. So that was this step here. The nucleophile leaves the carbonyl carbon, and we can draw the pi bond forming. Mm -hmm. You really could draw them separately or at the same time, but maybe it's best to draw it this way. And now there's really only one thing left to do. Let's show them. Yeah, that's right. We got plenty of water around. We wouldn't use H3O plus to deprotonate. We would use water to deprotonate. So let's show the mechanism for that. And now we finally got into what our goal was all along, getting back to this ketone. The fact that we got a ketone confirms that we were right to think that this was a hemiketal and that this was a ketal and not an acetal. If this had been an acetal and we had done this whole reverse reaction, we would have ended up with an aldehyde. Well, I think that's a pretty complicated mechanism right there, but it really is, each of these steps really is the exact reverse of each of these steps here. So hopefully it, 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 having these on one page in the handout, you can kind of compare these and see that each of these steps is the reverse of these. The main steps are not that complicated. We need to kick off one of these nucleophiles and then have the water bring in this oxygen. And then we can kick off the second nucleophile and form the pi bond. The thing that makes it complicated is, again, there's all these protonations and deprotonations coming before and after. Those are all laid out in the handout. Now, at this point, here you had the water that had a positive charge. You showed the water deprotonating, and then you showed this alcohol oxygen protonating. Here the water lost the proton, and here this alcohol gained the proton. If you wanted to, you could have done this in one step. You could have just shown the alcohol taking the proton from the water. That's that proton transfer we talked about. You could have just shown the alcohol taking the proton, then you would have skipped this picture and gone straight to here. Maybe that's better, although the one advantage of this is this way we got to draw the hemiketal. This way we draw the hemiketal, and otherwise we would skip that. So on the handout, that's basically saying that these steps can be combined, and then you just skip over the hemiketal or hemiacetal stage. You can protonate the second nucleophile at the same time as you deprotonate the carbonyl oxygen in a proton transfer. All right. Well, this reaction here at the bottom of page one of the handout is one of the most important reactions in the course, it's acid catalyzed. The nucleophile for the forward reaction is an alcohol. So here we would attack the aldehyde or ketone with an alcohol and acid. And if you want to do the reverse reaction, who do you attack? You attack an acetal or a ketal. And you attack it with H3O plus. And then you would do the mechanism from the bottom up here. Does that make any sense? It does. Okay, so we covered a couple of category one reactions where only one nucleophile attacks, and then we covered the most, one of the most important cases of category two, where two nucleophiles attacked, two alcohols, 
And we saw this was reversible, so we can also uh, have kick those two alcohols off as well. How do you know when you're probably going to do that reverse reaction, again, when you see a ketal or an acetal, a carbon with two bonds to, to two oxygens? Okay, well, it looks like we're out of time. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.